So now in this video, we're going to use a PNP transistor. This is the 2N3906. And we're going to set a voltage, but ultimately we will get a set current, even with differing loads. As long as the loads don't need too much power, we will get a reliable amount of uh, current. So that is why it is a current source. We're going to get a predictable amount of current that we can rely on. And so I have a power supply here set to 12 volts. It also displays how much current is being output and the uh, voltage there. So I have current limited to 20 milliamps. If the circuit needs more than 20 milliamps and the uh, meter is limiting the current, it would drop the voltage. But we don't have to worry about that in this circuit. We're just looking at now. There's a really nothing drawing current. This trim pot, it's a 10 kilo ohm trim pot. So we are using a lot less than one milliamp right now. So no current is being displayed on there. But uh, we'll get a pretty accurate measurement of current being used by the uh, circuit later on. But uh, mostly we're going to go with the multimeter. So to begin with, we have the uh, transistor here. And for our current source, we need a voltage difference. It's going to be across a resistor from the positive power supply over to this trim pot there. So we will turn this on. And so this is the voltage that's going to set the current. And I already have the trim pot set to 4.8 volts. So I really want about 4 volts right there. We're going to feed that to the transistor though, as we'll see coming up. So there's going to be a diode drop of about 0.7 volts from this right there. And so to um, make it a little easier, I set it a little bit above 4.7. So it's uh, 4.8 there. But we're going to lose about 0.7, so about 4.1 ultimately will be across the resistor. We'll see that coming up. So we have here the uh, PNP transistor right there and remember I measured that from the positive rail not to the negative rail. So it's a 2N3906 and uh, maybe we can zoom in enough to see that uh, probably not but uh, in any case it has the same pin layout as all the other 2N transistors I have so emitter base collector. Polarities are different than the NPN though. NPNs are more common so we have the emitter here, but instead of it going towards the negative rail, now it's going to go towards the positive. So I'm going to turn it uh, this way. So emitter is up, base and middle, collector is down right there. And we will plug it in. So I'm putting the middle pin, the base, where that jumper is from the trim pot, as we saw earlier, right there. And this is a 1 kilo ohm resistor. This makes the math easy for every volt across here we will get one milliamp of current. Let's see if I can push that out of the way. And so that's going, as I said, to the positive rail. Right there. So emitter to the positive rail. And the resistor, since it's on the emitter side, that makes it where it works with the voltage at the base of the transistor there. But again, we have that diode drop. So now, we can zoom back and go to measure milliamps of current. Right there, milliamps. And so this does not depend on load. Right now there's no load, so we're going to just make a short circuit connection. And there you can see, we have a little more than uh, four milliamps of current going through there. We will add an LED. Right here, so longly the anode has to go towards the more positive side, as always, for it to conduct and light up. And uh, we might as well zoom in so we can see that better. So you can see the cathode, the short lead, is down one row right there. And again, we have the same current, even though the load changed quite a bit. We went from practically no load to having an LED. Now we go here, so it's providing a steady amount of current. There's two LEDs. Of course we can bypass one or bypass both of them and go directly to the collector there once I get a good connection. Right there. Now we will add a third LED 
and you can see even with three LEDs in series the uh, current is holding steady right there so it is a current source we have a reliable amount of current even as the load changes now we are going to uh, turn the meter off between uh, shoots here we're going to go back to uh, milliamps of current with this particular meter I can leave the red probe where it is your meter you may have to move the probe based on the measurements uh, you're taking but I only have to move the probe here if I'm taking high current measurements so in any case we will uh, come back and look at this current again that we have here and uh, 4.14 basically so that's with a 1 kilo ohm resistor and that's because we got about uh, 4 volts across the resistor because of the diode drop right there so we set it to about 4.7 but we lose about 0.7 volts so this is a 510 ohm resistor so just to make the math easy we're going to say a 500 ohm resistor so this is half of the resistance which means more current is going to flow through it twice as much for a given voltage so let's see if we have 8 milliamps with the three LEDs and oh I put it to the negative rail that was the problem there we go has to go to the positive rail right there and let's see if that holds true there we go we got about 8 milliamps of current once I get a good connection through three LEDs and uh, two one and then uh, none so this is holding really well right now we have half the resistance twice the current of course for a given voltage if we want less uh, current we have to use a higher value of resistor to uh, limit the current but ultimately it's going to be the voltage across the resistor divided by its resistance to get you the uh, current and let's uh, turn the multimeter off before we go to the next stage it's especially important to turn the multimeter uh, off or set it to voltage or whatever because if you accidentally measure a power supply that doesn't limit current with a multimeter in the current setting all the current it can provide which may be more than the uh, multimeter can handle will go through the uh, meter you might blow a fuse or damage the meter so it's best to turn that off as soon as you're done taking current measurements 